Okay, so one of the things I've been waiting for the Gemini team to release is this new version of caching called implicit caching. So while Google was the first one to actually release caching for their models, meaning that you could save a massive amount on your token costs by caching the prefix of the prompt and then just adding bits to it at the end, one of the big challenges with their system was it was fully explicit, meaning that you had to basically set it up, you had to tell it to do it, etc. If it was just happening on the fly, it wouldn't happen. Now, I think Google doing that at the start certainly drove other providers like Anthropic, like OpenAI, etc. to actually start doing this themselves. And to be honest, some of them actually had better ways of doing it. So you can think of this move by the Gemini team is just catching up by now making a version of caching, which is fully implicit. Okay, so they talk about this in their blog post that now when you send a request to one of the 2.5 models, unfortunately, this is not for the 2.0 models. It's just the new reasoning models at the moment, at least. As long as the prefix is the same as what you've had before, then it will just automatically be eligible for this discount. So basically this allows you to get the benefits of the sort of explicit caching where you're getting the 75% token discount, but you don't actually need to do anything yourself to actually get this. So this allows for a whole bunch of new sort of things where you can front load your context window with a lot of in-context learning, with a lot of documents, even with a video, et cetera. And then you're able to basically just save 75% of that cost for each of the queries that come after that. As long as you've got it prefixed to the front of the context window and you're just adding things to the back of that. So I think the simplest way to do this is let's just jump into a collab and have a play with it. And I'll show you some examples. We can also look at how you can actually check if this is working, etc. So let's jump into the code. Okay. So if we come into the collab, we can have a look at basically how this works. And we've just got some simple setup, setting up the key, etc. And then first, let's just recap what you need to do with the explicit caching, if you still want to use that. And there are still cases that probably that is going to actually work better. So for example, if you do have something where you know, absolutely, you want to cache this and use it for a long time between calls, then you're often going to be better to go with the explicit caching rather than just trust it to the implicit one. So the way to basically do this is here, we've got a video file. I'm just downloading that. And then we upload that to the files API. So now we've got a reference to that. You see when we're uploading it, we need to constantly keep checking to see if it's processing or to see if it's done. Once it's actually done, we get a URI that we can reference for that. Once we've got that file, we now need to create a cache for it. So this is where we have an API request just for doing this. So you can see we pass in a name for it. In this case, we're passing in some system instructions and we're passing in the contents being that video file. And then here we're specifying the number of seconds that we want it to stay up. In this case, 300 seconds or five minutes that will be stating up. Now, once it's basically done that, we've got that cache that we can pass around and use in a normal model request. So you can see here, we've got that video and we've got that system prompt. Now we can just pass in some normal contents, as long as we also pass in the cached content in here. And then from out of this, we can see that sure enough, we're going to have cached tokens. The modality is we're going to have text. We should have video. There's our video ones. And then after that, we've also got some audio tokens. Obviously the video has got some audio in there as well. And then we go on to get our candidates, etc. So we can break those down and actually look at this, but really what's more important is looking at the token counts. So you can see here, we've got our cached content token count being 177,000 tokens. That's because that's basically the video that we uploaded. We got the response back being 135 tokens, which we can see down here. And then we can see the prompt tokens overall is this. In this case, we had no thought tokens coming out. And we've got our total token count here. Now, if we move on to doing it for the implicit caching, you can see that we're going to do it in this case, I'm just going to put sort of a really long system prompt, basically sort of a guidance prompt here of being a Marcus Aurelius advisor. 
And one of the key things here, I'm using the 2.5 flash model. If you're using the 2.5 flash model, you can cache anything sort of above 1,024 tokens. If you're using the pro model, it's going to be double that. So it's going to be 2,048 tokens. So in this case, I've got a reasonably long sort of guidance prompt about how I want the model to sort of respond as Marcus Aurelius. Now this is going to guide it, the kind of response that we want, et cetera. And you could think about using this as the system prompt if you wanted to as well. Now, in this case, I haven't done that. I've basically just passed this in and I've got it to expect that it's going to have someone asking for guidance here. Now, the first response that it gets back is a very generic one because I haven't actually asked it for any guidance. I haven't asked it any questions or anything this. And you can see, sure enough, it says, I wait your query ready to offer such counsel as my understanding of philosophy and life allows. All right. So at this point, we've just put it in and we've paid for all of those tokens, right? We haven't had anything cached in there because we haven't done it explicitly. It's just been a normal call to the model. And we can actually see that if we come in here and look, we can see that sure enough, our cached tokens are none but we've got our prompt tokens are 2,900, right? So it's well above the 1,024 that we need for doing that. All right, so next up, I'm going to basically just get it to answer a question. And you can see I'm basically just concatenating the original prompt with this question. And the question is, give me advice for dealing with my army. And we can see, we know that it's passed in the original prompt because we can see the response back, right? That we're getting a response back in the style of Marcus Aurelius and in the style of that guidance prompt that we put at the start. And we can see, sure enough, if we come down and we actually print out the token counts of that last response, we can see that 2,031 of them were cached content. So remember, for that content, we're getting a 75% discount on the price of the tokens out there. And we can see that, okay, we had thought tokens, 1,040. We had our candidate response being 908. That's what we're seeing up there. So your total prompt token count here is going to be including this cached content that we've got there. And you can see that the total token count out is the 4,864. Now, if we want to try this for the video, just like we did at the start, we still need to upload the video, right? Now, if it was an image or something like that, you could base 64 it and pass that in. But here I'm still uploading the video and that's no different than what we had before, except now when I'm gonna pass it in, I'm not basically caching it. I'm not setting up any special cache for this or anything. In fact, I've just copied this over and I've commented out the summarize video so that we'll see in the second call, we'll basically ask it to summarize. In this first call, we're just passing up the video and we're getting something out because we haven't really asked it for anything out. The response that we get out is this kind of breakdown, which is like a default for when it sees something where you haven't asked it to actually do anything with it. It just kind of gives you a breakdown of what that video is in there. And you can see, sure enough, if we come down here and look at our cached content, we've got none. We've got our candidates content. We can see we've got that 177,000 in our prompt token there. And so now I've just uncommented the text bit about summarize the video content. And sure enough, now we get a summary of the actual video content. And if we come down and look at our token counts now, we can see sure enough, the cache content is 176,000. 104. Now, the interesting thing here is I'm not sure exactly why it doesn't cache the whole sort of amount of tokens for the video, because it actually should be 177,000 in there, but it's getting very close to that. And you can see, sure enough, we've got the total token count being 180,000, the input at prompt tokens being 177,000, but we've had this 176,000 be cached which means that we're getting a 75% discount on that. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording, this is not working for YouTube videos. So my guess is maybe they will add this later on, or it may be that just because of the way the sort of YouTube videos are dynamic and done on the fly, it doesn't seem to be working for me for this. It has no problem using them, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to actually do any of the caching so that we can actually get a discount on that.
And this is something that I would certainly like to see. I'm going to follow up with the Gemini team about this. If I do find out there's a way to do it, I'll probably include it in a future video or something. Anyway, the main things to remember for now is that you can only do this with the 2.5 models. If you're doing it with the 2.5 flash, you need to have at least 1,024 tokens. And with the Pro, it needs to be at least 2,048 tokens. It's perhaps not the sexiest thing in the world, but it's something that can save you a lot of money and you should just be trying to implement it. You should be just trying to check it and make sure that it's actually working for your use cases so that you can actually bring down your costs overall. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you've got any queries about this or any suggestions on better tips of how to use this. My guess is over time, we'll sort of work out some cool little workflows to get the best out of this thing. And hopefully we will be able to use it for the YouTube videos, etc. But don't delay, really think about how you're planning your prompts so that you're making sure that the stuff you want to cache is basically at the front of the prompt. And then you're putting everything else at the end of the prompt. So well worth checking out if you're looking for a way to save money on Gemini API calls. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.